714. Questions are now emerging about how Maryland monitors its criminal offenders, like the man accused of shooting and killing a Navy midshipman's mother. Police say the suspect, Angelo Harad, was a fugitive at the time of the murder. This morning, attorney Kurt Nachman with EN Lawyers joining us live to weigh in on this, on how this could happen. Kurt, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So police say Harad had removed his ankle monitor. That was back in May after being placed on home confinement in an unrelated case. The question is, how can this happen? Well, it's very simple. The ankle monitor is simply a device that monitors where you go and, and what you do. And if you're confined to a particular area, um, it's certainly it's certainly been, especially during the pandemic, a great solution for pretrial um, monitoring of criminal defendants. But obviously that's contingent on them, you know, cooperating with the system and being amenable to having the ankle monitor on. Is there any indication of uh, who's watching this? Who's in charge of watching if the, the person either takes it off or goes out of the jurisdiction that they're supposed to be in? So there's really two places where they get monitored. Um, they can be monitored either by a private company or they can be monitored by um, the county. Hmm. And, you know, every entity, there's the private companies have their own sort of methodology for doing things. Typically, they'll notify the court if there's an issue with an ankle monitor, if it gets cut off, if it gets um, damaged somehow. Um, they will notify the court if it's the county. They should also simultaneously notify the court so that a warrant can be issued for the person's rearrest and, right. and being brought in for a bail hearing. Thinking about how it all comes to be, how does a judge actually decide who gets to wear the ankle monitor and who goes to jail, jail awaiting trial? So in Maryland, uh, we recently passed a law that revised the bail review back in 2016, 2017. And the judge is supposed to look at the least restrictive means to ensure public safety, but also ensure the defendant's appearance at trial. Do you think that, that things might change as a result of what we've seen here? Uh, Garrett Powell, the man charged in the January shooting of the, the city safe streets worker. We've seen this time and time again where the, the ankle bracelets are not working. Do you think there could be change? Has there been talk of that? Um, no, there hasn't been any talk of that, and that's what's interesting. I think that some of the private companies have done an excellent job of monitoring defendants pretrial, especially during the COVID period. It's given people an opportunity to work. It's given an opportunity for them to keep their family lives intact um, while they're facing serious criminal charges. But the question becomes, how effective are they at reporting these issues when they do crop up? How effective are they at... Um, you know, kind of making sure that people are properly monitored um, without leaving their zone or doing things that they're not supposed to be doing at different times. And so, you know, I'm not really sure how that's happening. And I also do know that some of the companies are a little bit overwhelmed, but again, it's been mm -hmm. a very powerful tool, very effective to keep pretrial incarceration rates down. And um, so hopefully it's something that we continue and maybe put a little bit more oversight into. Makes sense. Some good, uh, some good insight there. Kurt, thank you for your time. Thank you.